getting enough sleep is part of living a healthy lifestyle. And we know from past studies that not getting enough sleep can lead to obesity and diabetes and heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure, osteoporosis, and the list goes on. But most recently, there was a study that just came out that shows that not getting enough sleep, getting less than six hours sleep a night, can lead to aggressive breast cancer and reoccurrence. It's a big deal. I mean, sleep is a very important part of, of lifestyle. And at Case Western Reserve Medical Center, what they did is they studied 412 postmenopausal women in Vicky, and they did a test called the Oncotype test, which is a test that's used in women uh, that is looking for changes in their genes. They're looking at 21 different genes, and most of these patients that they're looking at are or women who have just stage one or two cancer, so it's not far advanced cancer, and they're estrogen positive, which means they're in a group that does well, and they're also women who had negative nodes. So what they found was, is it in this group uh, that the recurrence rate and uh, the aggressiveness of the, of the breast cancer was quite a bit higher. That's pretty scary, because you know, sometimes people just have trouble sleeping. Right. And so I think, you know, that we should talk about things that people can do to get better sleep and to get restorative sleep because there's nothing like going to bed and wanting to go to sleep and trying to go to sleep and now with this new information lying there thinking oh i might you know i might die or get cancer or whatever just, if i don't hurry up and go to sleep it adds to the stress we already have we know that we live in the fast track in this country and we average less than seven hours a night of sleep which is uh, not, not enough, enough sleep to restore and to prevent things like this so we need to look at sleep as a very important epigenetic factor that determines whether or not we're going to have good health or not. So in other words, we need to prioritize our sleep and not shortchange ourselves on sleep because we want to do something else. Right. We need to figure a way to do those other things and still get the sleep that our bodies require. Yeah. So it's easier said than done. And when I say epigenetic, what I mean is that this isn't a genetic thing that happens, mm -hmm. but it is something that we do in our life that puts us at risk for developing changes in our DNA in our, and consequent, and after that in our genes that can put us at risk for lots of diseases like what Vicki talked about. We know that our natural killer cells are suppressed. Uh, just with the loss of one night's sleep. If you miss five hours of sleep one night, your natural killer cells, which are the cells that fight viruses and cancer, are suppressed by 30%. They even affect our appetite. They indeed do. The natural killer cells, not so much, but the lack of sleep affects our appetite mm -hmm. because it changes the metabolism of two hormones, insulin and leptin. Insulin resistance develops when we don't get enough sleep, which puts us at risk for type 2 diabetes uh, and for the metabolic syndrome. And leptin is a hormone that suppresses our appetite that's made by fat cells. And when, when, it, is, when it doesn't work right, because it's, it has uh, less effect than it normally does, that's what's called leptin resistance, then it doesn't turn off the hypothalamus and the appetite center to tell us that we're full. So what happens uh, when we don't get enough sleep is our weight is affected, uh, type 2 diabetes becomes an issue. There's a hormone called insulin-like growth factor that goes along with insulin resistance that puts us at risk for cancer. So there are a lot of things happening here with just a little bit of loss of sleep. I think, think some good things for people to think about is that if you haven't gotten enough sleep at night, maybe to figure out a time that you could take a nap during the day. Mm -hmm. But try not to make it too late because then you have the problem again. I'm you can't go sleep. back. Can't go back to sleep. The other thing is to stay away from caffeine in the afternoons because that can affect your sleep. Um, maybe try a little um, essential oil of lavender to aid in your going to sleep. Sure. Trying to not going to bed, go to bed, and be thinking about all these things that are bothering you. Easier said than done. However, there are there are relaxation tapes. There are tapes to help people to sleep. There's even music that can help people. If you learn how to meditate, sometimes that will help you to be present because if you're staying present, it's easier to go to sleep than if your mind is going thinking about the past or the future and well, worrying that's what about happens. things. So sometimes I think it's good to keep like a notepad by the bed because if you can't sleep because you're afraid you're going to forget something, at least you could write it down and, and know that later on you can look at it and you're not going to forget it. Well, these are tools that are good tools to help assist us get to sleep. But the underlying reasons for why we don't sleep are deeper than that. 
It doesn't mean don't use them. In fact, it means quite the opposite. I would do exactly what Vicky said. But it also means that we need to deal with what is it that's keeping us from sleeping. And there's a whole lot of stuff on drsubuta.com that I suggest you go to. Uh, join. It's free. Take the, the insomnia assessment uh, a program that we have there and learn about the specifics of why you don't sleep because it's a whole topic that requires a, a lot of understanding and a lot of the time what it's going to mean is going over the things in your life that upset you that you don't have the tools to let go of and that keeps you in a state of being revved up and when you're in that state it's hard to sleep that's probably the biggest reason why people don't sleep in this country well there are other things too that are like you know if there's noises that bother you or your partner <laughs> snores to wear earplugs mm -hmm. if the sun comes up too early in the morning for your liking you know to wear iPads uh -huh. when you go to bed at night maybe to light some candles to have a little chamomile tea have a little bit of peanut butter before you go to bed <laughs> or something with tryptophan like uh, chicken or turkey uh -huh. and um, you know just things like that stay away from alcohol before you go to bed maybe take a bath in some lavender oil things like that there are a lot of things you can do the, I guess the point we're really trying to make Vicki is that lack of sleep is a big issue when it comes to lots of uh, things that happen in our life and amongst them of course is this business of getting breast cancer that's more aggressive and having recurrences that occur sooner than otherwise so if you don't sleep well, I think it's important to try some of the things Vicki has suggested, but also see your doctor and see if you can find out what it is specifically that's your problem and do something about it. There are lots of programs that go anywhere from psychotherapy to somatic psychotherapy and body work and relaxation techniques that can help a lot. Because you don't want to first be at increased risk for getting cancer, or if you have cancer, have it be more aggressive or come back too soon.